What is something people do because they think it makes them look smart, but it actually makes them look really dumb? Uh, share the results of a stupid Facebook IQ quiz. Using buzz words when talking about something they know little or nothing about. I got the blue screen of death and one of my friends told me it was because of my ISP, or could be my bandwidth. Do you even know what ISP stands for? Use words they don't even understand. You'll never look stupid for saying who when you mean whom. You'll always look stupid for saying whom when you mean who. Berate you for not understanding a joke or phrase and refusing to explain it because they obviously don't get it either. Correcting everything and everyone in the smallest things. It's just annoying. Even worse how they get offended when someone corrects them. Make up statistics and facts on the spot. Mention their IQ. Talk over or interrupt other people with their smart input. Just a bit of sodium chloride. When you say, hey I didn't know this, but shortbread cookies don't have eggs in them, and the other person says, you didn't know shortbread cookies don't have eggs in them, no Karen, that's why I started that sentence with, hey I didn't know this. But maybe it's more specific to me. Weave in and out of traffic only to wind up no further ahead. Pretend to be informed about and insist on having an opinion about anything and everything, above all, a total refusal to ever employ the expressions, I don't know, or, please explain. This instantly marks you out as an essentially uneducated person. Well-educated people know, above all else, what they do not know, and they have no compunction whatever about admitting what they don't know implicitly, because they know that an admission of ignorance is the surest way to remedy it, and have confidence that they can understand and learn about basically anything, given time. Know-it-alls are almost invariably covering up for their own intellectual insecurities, while effectively putting them on full display. I really really hate when people show up late to lecture, sit in the front, then start answering questions the professor is asking just by rewording what they said. Use extra long, endlessly winding sentences and niche jargon. I can't remember how many students I had to tell, that no, writing sentences which hardly anyone can follow and use words which are super specific and hardly anyone knows, does not make you seem clever or smart, let alone educated or intelligent. It makes you look like an idiot who has no idea what they are talking about, since they can't find the words to make other people understand the issue. Be contrarian or negative about absolutely everything. It's okay to have a negative opinion about something, but some people just love to argue for no reason other than to seem like they're smart. Steering conversations towards their area of expertise. I just asked if you saw Endgame, how are we talking about the Russian boycott of the 1984 Olympics? Asking pointless questions in lectures. This guy at work likes to stand up at his desk and practice his martial arts. Always talks about how if someone were to attack him how he would defend himself in the situation and take him down. With specifics. God it's annoying. Do you even listen to band you're wearing a shirt of, yes. Why would I wear a Pink Floyd shirt if I don't like Pink Floyd? Also, name three, band on shirt, songs. If they can, congratulations. You look really stupid. Diagnose every person involved in a spat on R, IATA and R, relationships as narcissists without knowing what that actually means. Answer questions on the spot. It's okay to say, I don't know, or, let me do some research and get back to you on that one. Getting comfortable with that really changed my career for the better because I was killing myself with anxiety when I didn't have answers or making dumb mistakes when I tried to have an answer for everything off the cuff tell you they don't own a TV. Usually within the first five minutes of meeting them. Hating anything that's popular, just because it's popular. Trying too hard to come across as sophisticated, edgy, and better. Quote. This is my truth, yeah, I get it, but that's not necessarily the truth. That's just your dressed up version, that helps you feel better at night. Argue for the sake of arguing. I believe what's true. Yeah, everyone thinks they do, my dude. I'm an English teacher and one of my colleagues who is also an English teacher with tons of experience and professional accolades posted this personal insight of the day on FB, sometimes people can pen point everything wrong about you, but when it comes to correcting themselves the pen don't work. Quote. My patients who Google their symptoms before they come in. They come in with a differential list that is much different from the one that develops in my mind as we discuss their symptoms. 
I've had people present to the front desk saying, it's either a heart attack or a blood clot, when in reality it's an upper respiratory infection. I have appendicitis or a bowel perforation, when it's really a UTI. And hash X200B, I'm happy that people seek answers online and critically think but please don't get yourself all bothered until you speak with a professional. I know sometimes we get it wrong, so definitely get that second opinion if you need it. And hash X200B, all the knowledge in the world is available online. The proper application of that knowledge is why I got all that extra education. Wearing glasses while doing prawn. Capitalize every word in a sentence. I'm convinced people dart in and out of traffic thinking they're beating the system and they congratulate themselves on being efficient. In reality, they've saved no significant amount of time and came out looking like an uneducated butt. But saying they know the difference between there, there and there and thinking that makes them smart, it doesn't. It's not difficult and I don't care if you can or not. Well actually. Not ever being in the wrong. For e.g. I was once talking to a friend about a specific high school and I told her it wasn't Catholic. But she proceeded to tell me I was wrong blah blah blah. I pulled it up on Google. Her reply, Google must be wrong. Do be like that, real smart people will learn from their mistakes. Trying to give an unasked advice. Starting debates with people. Those who do this just parrot talking points they overheard or read somewhere. People who really know what they're talking about don't start debates they start conversations. Become a wine snob. Pretending they know some hard words. I'm like do you even know what it means and then they're like oh I won't explain it to you cause you're dumb. Uh, my mom has a bumper sticker that says a shoe obfuscation. People ask her if it's English. Pushing a controversial subject with strong and divided feelings on people they don't know well enough thinking it makes them look smart or virtuous. Politics, climate change, religion, abortion, vegan, fitness, drugs, etc. It doesn't usually. Even when I share the thought or even just on the same side it still comes across as dumb and crass. Brag about how they're all about facts. Real facts based people don't say it, they show it. Even then, they still aren't a slong about it, slong, not duck. But people shouldn't turn into ducks about it either. Quoting Joe Rogan. Astronomer here. We get a lot of spam emails in my line of work from random guys promoting their pet theories, who will just email everyone in the department with their idea, sometimes we still get it via snail mail, but not as much lately. Most are the sort where their theory wouldn't work if they took more than first year undergrad physics, and the second most popular are, I have this idea but can you do the physics for me, invitations to collaborate. Most people glance over them just in case there's something interesting and it takes a few minutes sometimes to realize it's a crackpot email, but rarely if ever respond because these guys are often not all there with mental health. Anyway, there is one way I can always immediately spot a crackpot email. A huge fraction of these emails will open with the form letter form of Dear Mr. Name. Now, first off, it seems weird to assume Mr. In astronomy departments where everyone has a doctorate. Second, I'm a woman, as are close to half the people in my department, and we have pictures on the department website where the contact info is. So, way to go through all that effort to get the astronomer to get your theory, but indicate that you did 0% research on who you're writing to, edit, I still respond to people I advise maybe a hundred people a year for career advice on Reddit, for example, but I don't engage with people who sound potentially mentally disturbed and clearly know where I work. I doubt many women do. Spout conspiracy theories. Like they find one detail that's odd in event and make it seem like they uncovered a government conspiracy. The worst is when they start calling people who disagree gov slaves, sheep, etc. However what really get me is that if you really did find a conspiracy why are you talking to me? You putting us both danger female doggy. Give it to Nicolas Cage. This might be just me, but I'd say it's random internet fun facts that I've already read in a repost at the beginning of the decade. People who argue by talking louder or yelling. Being experts in every subject anyone brings up in conversation. Talking about a movie? Oh they've seen it and have lots of opinions despite not knowing the main character's name. IDK if it counts cause it's not as dumb as it is funny, friend of mine keeps using words that he either doesn't know what it means or doesn't know how to spell it. 
For instance he tried to say that he thought a girl we knew was a lesbian but he spelled it lesbian and because of that we call him the last Les Bender. Ben saying I am a very stable genius. Referring to women as females. Having to comment on literally everything a professor says, and acting like you're co-teaching the class. As confidently stating something as a fact when in fact they have absolutely no proof whatsoever, and in fact they could easily find out if it's true or not just by googling for 10 seconds. I'm not talking about scientific theories. I'm talking about telling several people that two people at work are brother and sister, when in fact they are married. 